Hey guys, this is Matt back on another World of Tanks video. I am sitting here in my SU-100M1. This is was a Top Gun game with my 100M1. I have a mastery with it, but this was a much more entertaining game, so I decided to show this. Uh, this is on Siegfried Line. Uh, however the frick you actually pronounce that, I honestly don't know. But this, I have an interesting strategy on this map. That actually works a lot of the time. Almost no matter what I do, I just go down the right side of the map here, and most of the time it works, and it gets me a great flanking position. In this case, it definitely does. Now, the SU 100 M1, uh, this is a tier 6 and 7 game, which is where this tank is the most effective. It is effective in tier 8 for a certain point, because it does have high penetration, but in tier 9, it loses its ability to really do anything because the gun does not do a ton of damage it has again decent penetration it's really accurate and your know, reload speed of 5.44 seconds is pretty really quick so it's a fast firing good penetrating gun it's a really good sniper but in tier 9 games where it can bounce and it doesn't do a ton of damage it does like 200 average damage it's not very effective but in games like this, it's really good. It has a high DPM. And this thing also, it's it has good mobility. It's good traverse speed. It's a pretty fast tank, and it has decent armor. It is, okay, it is really good sloping on it, as you can see. This thing's hard to crack from the front. It's a tough tank. It has decent health, too. Here's the first we see an M6 over here. Uh, I don't know what this M6 was doing. He was kind of moving around there. I took a shot when he was invisible. I'm not sure if I hit him or not. But I spot him again. Yeah, I did hit him. And then... He just kind of sits here. I don't know what happened, but he just kind of started sitting there and letting me shoot shells into him. Again, as you can see, I have fast shoot speed from this thing. And now that this side is open, I think he was the only thing on this side at the moment. Now that this side is open, I'm free to flank them. This line isn't watched very often. Um, it's a great way to get back, if you're a scout, it's a great way to get back to the artillery. They do watch this line, though, every now and then. The scout runs don't typically work, because usually only one tank can stop you if they're decent. But for something like this, in this game... If I ran into anything like an M6, it can't stop me. An M6 can't stop this thing, if it tried. So I'm flanking, I get spotted there. I believe the artillery spotted me, which I just saw it. And he's trying to run, but he can't run. Look how, ac yeah, again, look at how accurate this thing is. This is a very, very accurate, can I go into here, I'm going to free camera next time I zoom in on something. I do run into two more tanks here. Um, the ARL V39 and the Churchill 7. Churchill 7 tries to fight me. To say the least, he can't. I can penetrate straight through the front of a Churchill. No issue. Um, and he bounced shells off me there. The ARL gets on my side. Uh, he gets a good shot into me. Not enough to kill me, though. At this point, he basically realizes he's screwed. He's trying to run away. I do not have... This thing has really bad gun depression. Soviet tanks tend to have pretty bad gun depression, I've noticed. Um, that was a bit of a mistake. I had to repair my track there because... I don't know how my track broke in that situation. I'm pretty sure I'm a lot heavier than an ARL. I don't know to be honest though, it may be heavier than me, but this thing has decent weight to it. It's good for ramming lighter tanks. If you get the chance. I wouldn't really recommend it though, it's better to stay back and shoot, you're going to do a lot more damage that way. So now that I've killed them, I'm already in my flanking position, I'm just going to roll in the city and flank what's left in the city, which is basically nothing. There's, over here, there's a Jagdpanther. There's, uh, 
Most of what's in the city is already dying off. But I managed to get behind this Yag Panther. He doesn't even bother to turn around to shoot at me. Probably should have. He may have been able to bounce a shot off his front. But nope, he just decided to sit there and let me shoot him. What's interesting in this game is we have not seen that VK the entire game. Uh, since I did say this is a top gun game, obviously I find him and kill him, but it's just interesting that we never saw him through this entire game. He's way up there at the moment. So I get a few shots into him. First shot missed. Now I'm going to... See, if you zoom in all the way, look at how accurate that is at times 30 zoom. This is a incredibly accurate gun. I'm telling my allies let me get him because, you know, Top Gun. Allies never seem to respect Top Gun. Um, just remember, folks, your allies are dicks. They will take Top Gun away from you at every chance they have. That's the end of the game. I will have the stats up. Uh, summary of the 100M1 again. It's a good tank. It's a decent gun. Quick fire and high penetrating. Uh, low alpha damage but high DPM because how quick it fires and it's really, really, really accurate. So it's overall a good weapon. Uh, but in tier 9 matchmaking, it's not very good. It's decent in tier 8. It's mainly meant for lower tiers. When you get in lower tier games, it's really, really good though. And that's basically all I can say. The armor is good. The mobility is good. It's an overall good tank. So it, I honestly prefer of the SU-152, just because it generally generally seems to perform better. And that's basically it then. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.